and welcome to my video that explores gamification through the lens of Apostle et al.'s 2013 identification of the eight elements of games. The video shows how these elements are used in the gamification of learning by the world's largest online language learning platform Duolingo. The purpose of the video is to provide a mini case study to determine whether through Duolingo's use of gamification it has achieved its aims to enhance user engagement in the present. To start, it's important to note that there's a lot of debate and disagreement well. amongst academics about the definition of gamification. Interestingly, when gamification is defined, its definition often includes an explanation that distinguishes it from games. For our purposes, Seth Prebatch's explanation, as quoted by Kim Hine, is helpful, quote, A simple way to understand the difference between gamification and games is that while games tend to create an imaginary world that is separate from reality, gamification creates a game layer on top of the real world, unquote. Cap further defines gamification as, quote, the delivery of content for a purpose other than pure entertainment, end quote. Leaning further quotes Cap that gamification, quote, uses game-based mechanics, aesthetics and game thinking to engage people, motivate action, promote learning and solve problems, end quote. In this video, I'll be discussing Angela de Goucher's observation of watching her children, Nora and Claire, who have recently begun using Duolingo to learn French. The interview is structured around apostle identification of the eight elements of games used in the gamification of learning as cited by Fai and Riccardi that are, quote, rules, goals and outcomes, feedback and rewards, problem solving, story, player or players, safe environment and a sense of mastery, end quote. I am speaking to Angela de Goucher, the mother of Noah and Claire de Goucher. I'm really interested to know your uh, experience of watching Noah and Claire use the Duolingo app to learn French. Um, have you seen any changes in their behaviour? I certainly have. It has become a daily behaviour where the children both are keen and excited to want to go onto their devices to say, Mum, look, can I have Duolingo time? So they voluntarily want to learn more. They voluntarily want to succeed in new levels. Uh, I see them happily going on their device to access a program that I find to be beneficial as a parent where I can very clearly see the way that the process is set up for learning. So it seems that the children set their own goals. Absolutely. So within each daily session, they have what's called a certain amount of help attached to Duolingo and they can proceed with their Duolingo lessons provided they're getting correct answers. The more they succeed, the more time that they get. That's really important to them to know that if they're successful with it and if they're achieving with it, they get given more time. Ah, and so that so seems like it's part of the feedback and rewards loop. Absolutely. Uh, so that seems like that is um, a, a cycle that's perpetuating and rewarding ongoing learning. And the children are very aware that if they are successful and they do succeed in getting the correct answers and they do focus and concentrate, they are happy to have as much time on there as they possibly can until their health is depleted. So their target is to stay on Duolingo learning each day longer with each subsequent day to achieve more than just one level. The levels are very achievable in that they're, say, 10 questions each. The children are not getting bored. Uh -huh. So it seems that as they work through the program that they're doing a fair bit of problem solving. Absolutely. So they have to work out when they do um, have a wrong answer um, that they then are very focused on looking at what the correct answer should have been so that when that answer re-comes back on and they do need to show their learnings and understandings, they are then given the opportunity to successfully get that answer correct. Now, is there anything about them learning in a safe environment? How important do you think that is? Oh, look, that's essential. As a parent, that's really what all parents are aiming for when they choose particular apps for their children. Um, the fact that you do have options of levels, that it is capped per day with health, that you can sit and very clearly over the shoulder watch. There isn't a lot of confusing 
extra ads popping up where children can be you know exited out of those games it is within a very predetermined structure within that program that that makes me as a parent feel that they are learning within a very structured safe app. and um, just finally how would you comment on their sense of mastery and what they're uh, learning oh look at all levels this is self-driven by the children they access their iPads themselves in that they can log on they have their own targets they work on their own individualised program. They do it because they want to. No one uh, is saying you have to do Duolingo time. And for me, that is really important in terms of what they can access, how they access it, and then it's accessed purely from their own motivation. Your husband is French and you have your French in-laws visiting at the moment. Has that been helpful? in the kids practicing their French when they're not using the app? Absolutely, so they were outside playing yesterday and they had a game, it was a piggy in the middle style game and they had to say, I am a, and that was a fruit, so je suis banane, je suis pêche, and they had to come up with as many words as they possibly can coming from Duolingo, but also coming from the experience that uh, the grandmother could bring and add extra words. So they're extending their vocabulary in play. So it is having the knock-on of having practical application in the fun way that children repetitively learn. And because they have someone to practice with and on and through the application of Skype, uh, they have every reason to learn it. And this is been really a positive experience. Thank you so much for sharing your view, um, observing your children using Duolingo and... Um... In summary, the case study in this video has demonstrated that Duolingo has been successful in its aims to engage the user through techniques of gamification, but there are limitations to the use of gamification. Roy and Zellman and Fayella state that there is often a novelty effect when gamification is used. Fayella further says that it may trivialise the subjects learnt. And lastly, it's noted that engagement may decrease over time by Corvisto and Hanmari and Fayella. Interestingly, I interviewed Noah and Claire's parents about six weeks after I made the initial video to determine whether their engagement with Duolingo had had, uh, decreased over time or whether their motivation had to. Apparently the children are still very much engaged with Duolingo, still use it every day and are making great progress. I'm Maria Shaw. Thanks very much for listening. Au revoir.